is the spirit of preeminence. Preeminence means you're seeking to be the leader, the one in charge, to have the superiority. You have a serious ego problem and you want everybody to be under you. You have a problem with power, ego, pride, money, whatever the case may be, which is just, it's just not sensible. It doesn't even make common sense that one man is going to lead this nation or one congregation is going to lead this nation. You niggas are out of your mind, man. There's no way in hell the most eyes only deal with you. Stop the stupidity. Right? Go to um Syrac 7 and 1. You know what I'm saying? That's serious ego problem, man. The truth is only here. If it ain't under this man, it's not the, the most high. We only the ones keep the commandments. And then and, 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 and the truth is only with us. Right. You know, so come on, man. I'm Moses. I want to be the Moses now. I'm King David. Right. Right. All types of stupidity and nonsense, man. You know what I'm saying? Even like an elder once told me, even if you think you somebody from the past back on the earth today, Keep it to your damn self. <laughs> Even if you think, and I noticed the elder said think. Mm -hmm. right. You know, so come on, man. I'm Moses. I want to be the Moses now. I'm King David. Right. Right. All types of stupidity and nonsense, man. Right. But that's not what I was taught by my original elders, and that's what I still see now. Right. You know, so come on, man. I'm Moses. I want to be the Moses now. I'm King David. Right. All types of stupidity and nonsense, man. Oh yeah, uh, GMS, they believe the, uh, the chip is the mark of the beast. I just did a series on it on YouTube. Me personally, I don't believe the microchip is the mark of the beast. But that's not what I was taught by my original elders, and that's what I still see them. If a congregation is saying that they're the only ones with the truth, then maybe you don't need to join that congregation. Because that means pride is in that congregation. It's a damn lie, a super lie according to scripture. Is that ego? It's not in there. You're not gonna find it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, how is Shah said it's gonna be a body of men that he's gonna bring back to govern and rule this nation. You are out of your damn mind. You are consumed with foolish pride. If you think the most are only dealing with you or only your camp or only your elders or your, your 12 elders you got set up, that's the only men the most are dealing with in your, everybody got to come up under you. You are out of your damn mind. You are consumed with foolish pride. If you think the most are only dealing with you or only your camp or only your elders or your, your 12 elders you got set up, you are out of your damn mind. You are consumed with foolish pride. If you think the most are only dealing with you or only your camp or only your elders or your, your 12 elders you got. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rakhah Kodash, and double honors to the apostles and the elder millstone. Also a sincere shalom to you, you elect that's laboring. And I want to do a kind of a response video uh, since this is the direction that's been going. Uh, Priest Zabak, uh, he titles it the we're the only camp with the spirit truth. Okay, this is not a new video, but you know, this is where the spirit is going. Now, as you see in the intro of the video, he says that he only teaches what he's been taught by his teachers. You heard him say that. But he also says the King David, who is the King David spirit, which was taught in one West, he don't agree with. So is, is priest Zabak taking what he wants to take and teach what he wants to teach or what he believes? Or is, is it, does he really believe what his teachers have taught him? Or is he, is he stalemated on certain topics? And then because he can't, because of the pride, he doesn't want to admit that great mills don't have the truth on the mark of the beast. And the Cornelius thing seems to me there's a little bit of pride going on. Now, if he understood the spirit, which I believe Priest Zabak does have a spirit, a, um, a strong teaching spirit, then he would know that these doctrines aren't of men, but of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh who have bestowed it upon men. Now, I've recently got into it with a guy that used to be in my camp who claims it was Yahweh that woke him up to the truth. 
Okay, and you can technically make the point, the argument that, yeah, Yahweh Shai is the one that wake you, but he uses tools to do it. Okay, let's get a scripture. Uh, John 7 and 16, St. John 7 and 16. It says, Yahweh Shai answered them and said, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. This also cuts you Old Testament Israelites. I have to jump on that, uh, that. Yahweh was exalting himself up as the most high, which was absolutely not true. Uh, but anyway, it says, my, uh, my doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. It doesn't say doctrines. So going into this thing where he says, and I quote, he says, the Lord is not dealing with one particular camp or one particular group. Now, we got to go into just the understanding the common sense of when you dealt with Paul, who went on to ministry, he did not come with many doctrines. Colossians 2 and 8 says, Beware of any man that spoil you through philosophies and vain deceits. Okay? This is what he was saying to beware of. So now when you fast forward in the 2000s, right now, the 2000, 2019 at this point, you these philosophies is not just talking about the church, the Christian church. These philosophies are understood to be in the truth, okay? That's what these philosophies to be understood at. They're, they're understood to be in the truth. Guys that know that they're Israelites. That's the, the point. That's what Apostle Paul was speaking on. Also, those doctrines out there in the world, but then the truth is where it really hits home because you'll have guys that speak the name of Yahweh Shai, or don't. Or some say that a God's can send comforter. I see where Zabak is getting that. He says some men just do it for the man pleasing. And that's true. You got some man pleasers even in the truth. I understand that. But you will have sincere men. That's why we say sincere men that will get it. And the Lord is not going to deal with many different doctrines. The examples is of uh, Yahweh Shah. He said, he sent forth, Yahweh Shah sent forth 12, go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, okay? The, the, it's not that the Lord is, may not be dealing with, hey, Zabak could be the, the elect, but he would have to come on one accord with that doctrine, okay? More than likely. The Lord does what he wants. But as I said before, you're not going to have 12,000 believe in one doctrine, 12,000 believe in another doctrine, 12,000 believe in another doctrine, okay? The mark of the beast, look, if you are of the elect and you're going to be of the elect, you are not going to believe in that microchip and you are going to know that it's the mark of the beast, okay? No matter how you try to get around it. Um, let's go to Ephesians 4th um, chapter, 4th verse. It says, there is one body and one spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord and one faith, okay? There's only going to be one faith, one baptism. So how is it that the Lord is dealing with many doctrines? And that cuts that unity. See, that unity camp madness, it cuts that. Zabak even said, Maybe we need to get together as other Israelite camps and um, uh, seek our differences and get on one accord with one doctrine. Not going to happen. Man's going to the Lord. Zabak knows the scriptures. He knows the precepts. But there's a different thing between knowing the precepts, reading the precepts, and understanding and living the precepts. That's the difference. As sharp as this man is in getting the precepts and knowing the Bible, he still lacks the understanding in the milk, okay? And that's just what it is. He hasn't moved on from the one west way of life. But in some parts, he has moved on, but other parts he hasn't. So to say Cornelius was a heathen would mean the Lord is a liar. Malachi 3 and 6 said he's the Lord he changed not. I don't understand how somebody would say Cornelius is a heathen. That would make forth, and this might go a little deep, but that would make forth through a reincarnation today 
where you got groups that are saying he was a heathen, uh, that would be a reincarnation today or say he was a confusion of face. When we would say he's an Israelite, but these guys would say he's not because of the way he looks. Now, in this uh, uh, terminology, in the, in the doctrine, because he was of the Italian band, you would automatically think that he was a heathen. But you would think in John 16 to 13, the scripture, scripture says he will guide you in all truth, that you would have grown and moved up in the truth by now. But it seems that this guy hasn't moved forward. Okay? So he says the Lord is going to wake up a body of men. Okay? And that's true. But are they going to be in different doctrines? Let's go to verse 14. It says, 14, that we henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine. Okay? These are all different doctrines. Comfy believes in a doctrine. ICGC. IUIC believes in a different doctrine. ICBK believes in a different doctrine. House of Israel believe in a different doctrine. These are alphabet camps. But then you have the Old Testament Israelites, um, the, the Torah Knights, the Old Testament Israelites, they believe in a different doctrine. You got a Ben, ya, ben Yahweh or Ben Yahuda or whatever their name is. They believe in a different doctrine. So it's just bigger than the, uh, the One West. You know, everybody's getting on One West. But you got other groups outside of One West too. And they all have different doctrines. So you mean to tell me, that the Lord is just going to deal with all these people, with all these different doctrines. And if you are uniting in some form of unity fashion, it's nothing wrong with saluting a brother, you know, so-called brother, okay, Israelite fellow brother. There's nothing wrong with that. Even y'all might kick it and talk for a minute. But there should be some debating going on over the scriptures to, to, to convince uh, one another whose doctrine is correct. If you don't see that, um, these guys are not really being brotherly, okay? Because to truly be brotherly, you would try to convince this brother that this is the true doctrine so he can be saved. So, uh, he goes on this word, preeminence. Well, let's look this word up. Okay, preeminent says, having paramount rank, dignity, or importance. So I don't see what is technically wrong with preeminent, okay? Unless I'm missing something. He's just saying it's about uh, being prideful and boastful. I mean, that might have been the word to look up. I don't know why he uh, he posted that word. Now, when you go into the word dignity, it says formal reserve or serious a seriousness of a man of manner, appearance, the quality or state of being worthy, honored or esteemed, high rank office or position, a legal title of nobility or honor. So I don't see what's wrong with the word, you know? This is when you a case where you take words and you want to make it to fit to suit your agenda. Uh, really, what Zabak is doing is he's trying to get you to persuade to be with him. This is a form of counterintelligence because now if he says, look, don't follow those groups, you just do what you want to do, and don't you don't have to come to us just go where you want to go. We understand that's the spirit of the Lord will guide you there. But what you're saying is, rest with me. It's easier here. Well, we're, we're telling you at Great Millstone, we're not set up to say it's going to be easy. We are set up to say, this is where your salvation, the, this is the doctrine that your salvation lies. I am not at all going to sit up there and say, the apostles are going to save me. And anybody who think that is off. But I will say, when I understood and studied this doctrine, I knew this is the, the best doctrine that I could uh, uh, get up under that will more likely lead to my salvation and my, uh, uh, and my family's salvation. Let's say that, who's following this doctrine. Okay? So, it's not about men per se, but it is about a doctrine and who has the truth. The Lord is not, a po again, as I said, Apostle Paul said it best. The Lord is not an author of confusion, but of peace, which means quietness. You know, 
when we have the doctrine we follow, that's why we don't have to argue back and forth with one another, right? On on a on a ordinary, you know, on, on a level consistently. Okay, so did Paul bring a whole bunch of doctrines to the people? The Yahweh, the apostles, the disciples, did, were they all about different doctrines and saying you can be in this doctrine if you want or that doctrine? No. It's all about one doctrine. That's all I have on that shallow wall.